Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I'm going to be going over Night Eye in My Hero 1's Justice 2 Remix Edition. And Night Eye actually doesn't have a crazy amount of changes, but they're really awesome changes that make him so much more fun to play as. So one of the small examples, like, isn't a huge change, but it makes a, so much of a difference, is his air attack string actually wall splats now, and is actually a really good wall splat. So if I show an example of a combo like this... He can actually combo into it from so far away, and it goes straight into a wall spot, which actually makes sense, because he sends them flying so far, usually. And now it actually just, you know, really makes sense, and really looks good. So, that is a really awesome quality of life change, so, and this actually used to do his, like, full attack string now. It's just a really good wall splat tool that you can get super consistently, because Night Eye didn't used to really get very good, um, wall splats. So, yeah, that's really awesome and really handy. Um, one of the biggest changes, though, is to his Tilt Quirk 2, can actually just be comboed off of meterlessly now, like, you can just cancel it into his attack strings, um, and that leads to combos like this. I messed it up, but still, you can see the point that he can get a lot of combo potential that he didn't used to have using this buff, and especially with zero dash cancels, that's a lot of damage for Night Eye. There we go. 11,500 damage, and I could have dash cancelled that to get a little bit extra damage off of the this, which already does a ton of damage as an ender. Like, see that? That's why I like to end combos in this, instead of going, like, two hits into this, into this. And after this, I wait and go into this and this, because that does almost 6,000 damage on its own, and it barely meteor blows, so I can sometimes even go in for an extra combo if I want to. It's pretty crazy. And I think I can also cancel into plus ultra if I wanted to, yeah. So I can just get a huge chunk of damage at the end of that already massive combo. So, uh, yeah, wait, let's quickly go over all the changes first before I just fully talk about combos. As you can see there, his red attack actually just wall splats, or floor splats, I guess, like Kami's Quirk 2 string. And on the wall, it'll just bounce them in a way that you can combo off of it. Uh, his tilt attack's the same. Um, his regular attack string kind of bounces the opponent weirdly, so he can actually combo off of it consistently. Like, into, like, his yellow attack, or whatever you want to combo it into. I didn't actually know that wall splatted, but he doesn't really need that, considering he's, like, such good wall splats now. Wow, yeah, so look, now he has that wall splat too, so... Now Night is almost like the king of wall splats, he can get them so well off of almost anything. Um... I don't think anything else- Oh! What am I kidding? The biggest change, the most important change, and I think the one that everyone was expecting, the change of the century that everyone wants but never gets for some reason, his parry actually starts quickly now. Like, he doesn't have to wait, like, 200 seconds. Look, ready? Press. It starts. Like, it's almost instant. It's really amazing. So he can actually use it now and get the parry buff off consistently. Like, what- Why wasn't this a thing before? It's usually so slow. Now you can actually do it on reaction, it doesn't take like a whole second to start up, it's really awesome. And uh, yeah, that's basically the only change to the parry, but it's like such an easy fix, but it's such a needed fix, because now the parry is actually useful. Because it's such an awesome move, but you never get to see no one use it, because it takes five years for it to start up normally. It's like, I can react like super late and still get it perfectly there, even if I like, wait, and I can put Bakugo on to like do an attack string and stuff. Oh, wait, what? Why didn't he do the whole thing? Wait, why isn't he doing the whole thing? Wait, let me wear this off. Maybe that's why? Okay. Like, he can interrupt gaps with it. Like, Bakugo isn't the greatest example because he's a really obvious gap, but if your a character has, like, small gaps in it, like maybe shoot-style Deku. Um, okay, I don't know why he's not doing the whole attack string. But basically you can interrupt gaps with it as well more consistently now because it starts up so quickly. So now it's actually just a really useful move and he can actually get his parry off. Yes! Thank you modders. And not biking for not buffing this move at all and making it completely pointless. So uh, yeah, now that we've talked about all of the changes, how do his combos actually look now? So, like we said about the wall splats, he can do something super simple like this and because it spins him around. If he was facing his back to a wall, he can get a super easy combo like this. Oh, thanks, Mr. Elberon, for messing that up. <laughs> but so yeah, see, I notice that I'm facing against the wall with my back, and I can just do that very simply, then into the tack string, and then go for something like this. 
Okay, why is that whiffing? I literally did not miss this once when I was not recording. Damn it, recorder's curse. Please just hit. Come on, stop making me look look bad. I know I am bad, but you don't have to show everyone. And I don't know. You can do something like that. I did not necessary dash cancel in there, but you can see the point. You can get big chunky damage off of the wall splat very easily because he has such an easy wall splat tool now. And like... It's just really cool that he has this like wall splat super easily, so if he's ever realized he, he's facing a wall, or maybe I need to turn around to face the wall, I can do something like this. Uh, and if I, you know, see, pretend there's only like one wall on the map, I can just do something like this, spin it around, and do that. Actually, I can probably do even more damage if I um, cancel it into the attack string again. So yeah, if I'm on a wall with only one wall splat and I realize like I'm facing it or my back's to it off of any type of hit, I can just get it, get a wall splat, whether I'm facing the wall or I have my back to my wall. Wall splats for days. That is really awesome. Okay, and so a combo that I like to do if I'm not facing a wall is something like this. So you actually get can do this twice in a combo, and this is part of the hard part. Oh yes, there we go. I hit it. So the timing off of the yellow attack into those um, Tilkwerk ones can be pretty tricky, but I just did it there. And as you saw, that was a zero dash cancel combo that did 11,700, I think, which is pretty awesome for like a combo that's not too hard to execute except for the very end. But even at, like at this point, like I've still done really good damage. Even if I want to make it easy, I can make it 10,000 damage and then go in for a plus ultra two, plus ultra one if I end it that way. So yeah, that's really awesome. And as we saw before, sometimes it doesn't actually meteor blow. And if I react to it not meteor blowing, I can actually just dash cancel again and get more combos. Uh, I should have ended that a little bit earlier, but as you can see, if I was a little bit better and just did like this and maybe go into a plus ultra one or something, I could have added a really big chunk of damage to the end of that combo. And in that same vein, uh, oops, what am I doing? He can get really easy confirms into his plus ultra ones and twos and stuff because he can just do stuff like this. Uh, oops, I did that a little bit slow. You need to cancel it, like, the second he hits the floor. What? Excuse me. And then two hits into the tilt attack. I hope that wasn't too slow. There we go. Hey, okay, that's slightly missed. Usually it does about 14,000, but... Yeah. It's cool that he can like confirm into his plus ultra ones and obviously the same goes for his plus ultra two that's actually going to be more consistent because it's only one hit and you'll just get a big chunk of damage at the end of your combo and uh yeah you know you can combo off of basically anything now even his red attack which is not something you used to be able to do so it's cool that you can do that now and add actually that's gonna add a lot of damage to my combo maybe actually no it'll meet you earlier yeah but still he's such an awesome character and oh something i forgot to mention about combos is actually his tilt quirk one in the air he can actually combo off of it if he's very close so at least in some situations if you have really good timing you can do stuff like this and actually co combo off of it meticulously without having to put in a dash cancel like i did before so i didn't do it there well but sometimes if you have your timing really perfect after you do the whole combo and end in this and maybe you have to be the near the wall or something but i've done it a few times before but you can actually just combo off of this meticulously and go back into regular attacks. Then walk then again. Um, didn't work then again? What? Recorder's curse, I tell you. I promise this works. <laughs> yeah, but basically, if you have really good timing and you want to go for some more advanced combos, you can do this, and this works sometimes, and the combo counter will still keep going, and it actually still counts. But, uh, yeah. And also, a note on Night Eye, this is something that he can just always do, but because he's still Quirk 2, I mean, his Quirk 2 in the air, is, like, so good at not meteor blowing, he can actually get really consistent recovery resets like that. So see, I just ended my really long combo that did, like, what, 10,500 damage, and did a, like, almost unavoidable recovery reset. Like, I think the only way to avoid it when they're this clean is to like just guard because when they hit like on the first frame of your like end of your recovery you don't have time to do a yellow attack or something so if you time it really perfectly like i did the first time and not now 
my goodness, he can actually get a super clean recovery reset and just go in for another whole combo. And why the heck am I missing this so much? And, uh, yeah, so, oh my god. <laughs> so after you do the recovery, you can do something like this. After you get the recovery reset. So if I actually can get pretty big damage. So, you know, I've done my 10,500 damage combo already, which is already a big chunk of damage. And then, oh my goodness, if I don't keep timing this wrong, I'll just do it a bit late. Um, after I do my recovery reset, that is probably one of the most consistent recovery resets in the game, and like the most like real ones, because there's like barely any time for them to do anything. And I can do something like the okay. Pretend he just recovered. So I do this. Okay, there we go. Now I hit it. And depending on where I am, because you're probably going to be near the wall after doing your whole combo, you can do stuff like this. And you can actually add in a little bit more if you want to do something like this. You do have to be near the wall in order to do these ones. Because the Tilt Quark 2 won't reach otherwise. And yeah, something like that, because you can't actually do the Tilt Quark twice from the air. But see, even that simple combo was 10,446 damage. Yeah, so adding that onto the 10,000 damage you did before, and then you get the recovery reset, you're getting 20,000 and a bit. 25,000 damage basically for just doing two meterless combos and going for a recovery reset that's really hard to avoid so yeah you want to try and not recover too much against this version of night eye or else you're gonna die and get 20,000 damage just for two simple combos so yeah that's pretty scary stuff and honestly I think that's about all there is to mention about this version of night eye basically he's now like a wall splat monster that can get wall splats from like almost any angle he now actually has a parry that works consistently. And he can get really awesome combos and convert off of anything. He has really good recovery resets. This version of Sir Night Eye is actually just an absolute beast and he's so fun to play as. And I actually really like how he has combos that you can either do a really easy version that does about 10,000 damage or you can go for harder stuff to get higher damage, like 12,000 damage for a single combo if you're willing to risk it for the extra difficulty of the combo. So yeah, I love this version of Sir Night Eye. I think he's really fun to play as. And yeah, I'm actually really intrigued to play with him online because I haven't done that yet. But anyways, thank you for watching all the way through this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Bye.